So hello everybody and welcome to another uh, Football Manager uh, highlights video. This one comes from Football Manager 2005. Uh, I have been playing a lot of Football Manager lately and I really wanted to give this one a go. Uh, this is an older version. Basically, um, for those that don't know, the series was originally called, I think, Championship Manager. I think I think it's had many different names, or maybe Championship Manager was its original name, but they changed publishers in 2004, and so that changed the name of the game from Championship Manager to Football Manager, and the first edition with that new publisher was Ch uh, Football Manager 2005, i.e. this one. Uh, the first version I played was Football Manager 2006. However, years later, I ended up buying uh, the original game, the first game, which is the one I've got here. It was actually not that long ago. I think it was last year I bought it, and I decided to give it a go. Um, but the problem is, versions from 2005 to 2007, there's something about them. I think there was some Windows 8 or Windows 10 security update, which means you can't run them. Uh, I've tried to install them into Windows 8, but it's not possible. Um, so I've had to, I'm having to use my age-old laptop here to run the games, and I've been playing the game on them, and obviously I'm recording on them as well. It's coping ever so slightly. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll just run through the season. I don't do a highlights of every single season I do in Football Manager um, because some of them are just mediocre, some of them are uh, bad. Um, but if something unreal happens or I achieve something or whatever, then I, I don't see why I shouldn't do this, uh, especially as it's been happening a lot more lately. Um, so that's what I'm going to be doing here. Well, okay, let's let's just get to this crux of it all. We won the league. Um, this was the first season I was playing the game in. Uh, this is the 2004-2005 season. Uh, we finished top, which was great. It didn't look like it was going to happen at one point, but it eventually did. If we have a look at our placings here, we were in the top four basically the whole season. The top four consisted of ourselves, Hamilton, Falkirk, and... Uh, I can't remember that, Wraith I think, but they ended up finishing 5th behind Partick. Uh, this is the Scottish First Division, which today is known as the Scottish Championship. It's the second top league in uh, the Scottish football system, which is what we played in for about 7 years in the middle of the 2000s. So um, this was one of the seasons we were in the second top league instead of the top league. We're, I think we've mostly been in the second top league, just lately we've, we've been having a really good run in the top league, so um, yeah, usually we're in the second top league, and in this version of the game, that is where we are. And we actually won it, and we got promotion to the top league. I'm just going to run through the season. Uh, I'm not going to show every game, but uh, we'll. I, w I will be showing the games live. This is my squad, uh, just real quick, top scorers. This guy, Stephen Hislop, he's a really good player. I... Don't know how training works in this game, but I've just left it to my assistant. I have no idea how training works. Peter McDonald was the other top scorer. Uh, he's not actually doing that well, as you can see in training. Again, I have no idea how it works. It's just all gobbledygook. It's a completely different system. They had a training overhaul in uh, the 2006 version. But there you go. So they were the two top scorers. Uh, my other striker was Stephen McConnellock. He got nine, which is pretty good. He's also suffering from a lack of training it seems. Best player or highest average rating was Ryan Stevenson but he was injured for the half the season. He was out with a broken leg for about 9 months. Got 7.9 average rating with uh, in only 10 appearances but our overall highest average rating player or rated player was this guy Alan Mahood. After 36 games, 5, goal de uh, five goals, sorry, he had a 7.42 average rating. He's 32, pretty good player, although, yeah, he is suffering some, somewhat of a decline as well. So, yeah, those were our top performers. Our, our top, the guy with the top appearances is this guy, Ian Maxwell, played pretty much every single game, I think. Yeah, he played pretty much every game. Then we've got, uh, you can have a look at the list out there. That's the order of players in the column of appearances. So, let's get on to the main thing, fixtures. Um, so... Start off with preseason friendlies. Uh, I, I'm not going to go through them all, but we lost one 0 to Hearts. They're in the league above, so that was expected. We beat Lancaster, a team from Northern England, three one. Pretty good going. Those are the scorers. We lost to Wigan, who are in the English Championship in this version. Uh, and then we lost to Rochdale, another English team, and then we lost to Stenhouse Muir, which was particularly embarrassing since Paul Sheeran missed a penalty, and they're also in the third division, so two divisions below us. Anyway, so that was our preseason over. We lost basically every game, but, you know, preseason doesn't count. Um, first game was actually in the Challenge Cup, which is a cup competition for lower division teams only in Scotland. Uh, we actually lost 2-1 to Falkirk, as you can see here. 
let's watch the goals. We're not going to watch the goals for every game, but might as well just check them out. It is 2D, no 3D in this version. Uh, good strike there from the edge of the area by that Thompson guy. Let's switch to the next highlight. Throw it all. Oh, what the heck was that? That was awful. I've played this over the last couple of days, so I should remember them, but you play so many games, you just don't remember them all. And finally, our goal. Stevenson plays it to Fotheringham, and he just dicks over the keeper. Nice and easy. Uh, well, the goal was easy. The game wasn't. We lost 2-1 and got knocked out, which was a bit disappointing. Uh, but our first game of the season, well, our first league game of the season, was against Queen of the South. Our first goal was by Paul Sheeran. Uh, we've got Ross Forsyth there to ride Stevenson. And... Nice finish from the edge of the area. I'm sure you could, you could appreciate it more in 3D, but that's just the way of it. Uh, this is our second goal. David Hanna passes it forward to Stephen McConnellog. And uh, it was a nice chip to finish it off. So that was a 2-0 win over Queen of the South to get us started. And as you saw back in the graph, we were top four in the, in the league for the entire uh, season. We only went top, however, after week 26. And I'll speak more about that in a bit. Uh, but going back to our fixtures, we beat Queen of the South. That was fine. Oh, we've got, I've got to show you this, right? Partick. <laughs> they, they dominated the game. Uh, scored, I think they dominated the game anyway. Okay, maybe not, but well, either way, they scored early. Partick scored early through Mitchell. Well, I, I don't know how that went in. Keeper was atrocious there. Um, and then I just went to a 4-2-4 formation, which is very unbalanced. And as you can see here, this is what happens when all out attack. <laughs> Steve McConnell scores against his former club. He used to play for Partick. And we end up with a draw, which, kind of cheap, comes uh, right at the end of the game. But that gave us a point against Partick, so kept us unbeaten. Uh, we then beat St Mirren, Ryan Stevenson with a goal in 35, we're not going to watch that. We then played Clyde, Stephen McConnellog and Ryan Stevenson. They both scored early in the first 20 minutes. Uh, Ian Harty pulled one back for Clyde, uh, but we took all three points at the end. Then it was League Cup action, this is for professional teams in Scotland, so all divisions, all professional divisions. Uh, we were against Ayr, who are the division below us. Uh, but we won fairly easily. Peter McDonald scored in 23, and then Kevin Richovic scored a penalty. He's actually a centre back, but his penalty taking uh, number, his rating is pretty high. Well, it's higher than 10. In this division, anything higher than 10 is good. But we went through to the next round. Then we played Ross County, 0 0, nothing to see there, but it's a point. Uh, we then lost our first league game of the season, 2 1 to Wraith. Uh, Hamed Sacco scored in 23 minutes. We then pulled one back, or equalised, sorry, on 41 minutes. Uh, but Colin McMenamin uh, scored with a penalty just a few minutes later. Uh, put them ahead just before half time. That was very, very gut wrenching. We play Hamilton, get a 1 0 win. Stephen Hislop with a uh, goal in 73 minutes. I actually signed him. He wasn't in the club at the start of the game. I signed him from Inverness Cali Thistle, uh, who you will hear about right now, in fact. We played Inverness Cali Thistle, who are actually. Uh, they were the division above us, however, they got relegated, so next season will be the division above them. So it's kind of weird how things work like that. But anyway, they were the favourites, and it was nil-nil, and we absolutely battered them. Look at this, 14 shots to their three, four on target. I mean, the four on target is pretty trash, but we had 14 shots to their three. Uh, they dominated possession, but we should have absolutely battered them. It went to penalties, and they won. I knew it was going to happen as well. I've, I've played this game long enough to know exactly what's going to happen. Went to penalties. Uh, they scored three. We missed three. They went through. Very, very, very frustrating. But there you go. That is Football Manager. Uh, no more draw with Airdrie. Got us a point. We then drew one more with Partick. Uh, this is pretty critical because, once again, Partick take the lead in the eighth minute. Now, if we go back to the last game against Partick, you can see we scored in 90 minutes. Steve McConnell log. Uh, this game against Partick... You can see we equalised again in the 90th minute. Let's watch the goals. So it was Fleming, I think, that scored for Partick here in the 8th minute. So very, very early. That's a very, very poor goal to lose. I went for a 4-2-4 formation again. And <laughs> Paul Sheeran just sticks it away in the well, in injury time of the game. So for the second game in a run against Partick, a 1-0 down, switched to a 4-2-4, which is a very, very reckless formation. Doesn't really have much cover for the defence, eh, but it does provide uh, more attackers going forward, obviously. And same outcome, last minute goal. They must hate playing against me. Then it's time for the first big game of the season. So, to give you a bit of context to the league, eh, IRL actually around this time, from about 2002 to 2005, Falkirk 
were a powerhouse in this the second tier. They actually won the league in 2003, but they couldn't get promoted because their ground was like trash or something and uh, safety facilities and seating and all that didn't meet the standards of the top league. So they won that. Then they won the league again, IRL this season. In the game, however, it had them as a powerhouse. As you can see here, they were top. Apart from one week, they were top all the way to game 25. So for most of the season, they were top. They were the main team. They won so many in, in a row. And I was just thinking to myself, there's no way they're going to slip up. And sure enough, we came to play them. We played them in the cup already, the Challenge Cup, and lost. We lost by the same scoreline uh, in the league. So let's have a look at the goals, I guess. Thompson here. Oh, that was a poor bounce. Yeah, most of our goals are just bally defensive errors. I mean, we're probably one of the top teams in this league. Uh, this was our goal. I think it was, I can't remember who scored it. McConnellog, I think. Nice pass in. Yeah, another nice chip finish. Very good goal. Wasn't to last, though. Uh, as we can see here, Falkirk coming forward again. Andy Laurie out wide. I know that name because he used to play for Saints. And Nichols, it looks like. Uh, has stuck one away from about 30 yards and that won them the game, got them the three points. I think we were about second or third at that point, so we were like chasing them, uh, but they won. Not much we could do. At this point, I was pretty much resigned to the fact they were going to win the league, uh, which obviously doesn't happen, but more will be told of that later. Uh, here we've got Queen of the South game, 3-2. Uh, uh, let's watch the goals. So we've got a corner here from Queen of the South. Very, very straightforward for a uh, textbook header. This is uh, our time to shine, our time to get an equaliser. Chris Hay comes forward, ball into Stephen McConnellog. And it, the keeper made a save, but it just kind of ran along the ground in front of the goal. Easy tap in there for Peter McDonald. Uh, now we've got us coming forward again. Chris Hay, nice finish at a tight angle, having been foiled by the keeper once. And then Queen of the South equalised once again. Now, I believe I was playing slightly more attacking football, so it was kind of inevitable that was going to happen. But, things didn't stay like that for long. A few minutes later, Chris Hayne to Mahood. Bit of interchanging there of possession. But, it comes back to Alan Mahood, and he finds the net in the middle of the penalty area. So, or from the middle of the penalty area. So, we get the 3-2 win, and the three points that go with it. Uh, we then had a couple of window wins, one against St Mirren. Last or almost last minute winner again from Alan Mahood. Uh, he scored in the game against Queens as well. Yep. And then we beat Clyde 1 0. Stephen Hislop with a goal. Then we came up against uh, Ross County. Sorry. They actually finished bottom. I yeah, they finished bottom of the league. And as you can see, things here are not going so well. Uh, Gary McSwigan scored two goals early on. Let's watch them. Right from kickoff as well. Jeez. So. They scored very, very early. Very, very poor goal, goal to lose so early. I think defences are very hard to set up in this game. Let's skip to the next highlight. This is Ross County's second from Gary McSwagan again. Just a tap in there after good passing play from his team. Paul Sheeran scored from the penalty spot to pull one back. At this point you're kind of thinking, yes, we're back in the game. It's no longer 2-0. Half the deficit. And then Sheeran with a delivery into Kevin Ruchovic, it looks like. He was uh, one of our centre-backs who, of course, scored scored a penalty I mentioned earlier. Uh, that put us level, and then we scored the winner with uh, 14 minutes to play. Ball into Alan Mahood, and the midfielder tucks it away nicely. So we got the three points there from a losing position, which was good. Uh, then had a 0 draw against Wraith. Not much to see there, although it was a point. Then we beat Hamilton 4-1. Now this is key because obviously Hamilton finished second. I'll tell you how that happens, but let's have a look at the uh, the goals first of all. So we scored first through uh, Steve McConnellog. Good ball forward to Hislop, whose shot was saved, but McConnellog was there to follow it up. Then following this, it was time for Hamilton to equalise. Carrigan plays a Gribbon. Simple finish into the net. We did go back in front again, thankfully, uh, as you can see here. Hart plays it to Mahood, who plays it Hislop, who scores a nice shot from the edge of the area. And then we go further into the lead on 67 minutes. Bad mistake there, bad pass from the defender. Peter McDonald picks up the pieces and slots it home, giving us the lead. And then further on, you can see here Mark Baxter plays it Peter McDonald. Nice finish from a tight angle. I know it loses its authenticity when it's 2D, but keep in mind this was Football Manager for me for many, many years before 3D came out. Uh, but there you go, 4-1 win, 3 points, not bad. Next game, 
Ah, now here we go. So Falkirk, I think you're still top at this point. I could be wrong, but yeah, no, I think I think Falkirk are still top. Uh, but we positively outplay them in every sense of the word. As you can see, they only got four shots to our twelve. Let's have a look at the goals. So as you can see here, uh, I think this was an own goal by Kevin James, who actually played for us in real life. Yeah, look at that. It totally deflected off the guy. It was a shot from one of our midfielders, Alan Mahood, I think. Uh, that put us one goal up. Then, in the second half, we double our advantage. Peter McDonald cuts inside nicely. And a right-footed shot into the uh, roof of the net. Pretty nice. And we extended our lead even further. Alan Mahood from the edge of the area. Nice finish. A lot of our shots were actually long range. I think a lot of teams sat deep against us, but that tends to happen when you are the favourites going into a game or going into a league season. I think the teams will actually sit deep against you, so it's harder to break them down. Anyway, we got three points against Falkirk. That was huge in the race for promotion. They were still fairly far ahead. You've got to keep in mind that they'd won. In fact, we can look at this now. So that was a game they lost against us. They'd won all those games back to this Hamilton game, so I don't know how many that is, and then even before the Hamilton game they'd won a ton, so we stopped that winning run in its tracks and obviously clawed some points back and reduced the deficit uh, that we were facing looking up the league. Then, following that, 3-1 win against Airdrie, pretty useful, uh, useful in our chase for promotion. Uh, as you can see, Alan Gow scored early. Uh, let's actually watch the goals. Alan Gow scored early. We equalised in the first half, but it was only in the final few minutes we actually won the game. So this was uh, 15 minutes in. Alan Gow, who went on to play for Falkirk. Nice finish into the corner of the net. Following this, in 38 minutes, one of our players gets the equaliser. I say one of our players because I can't pronounce the guy's name first time. Bal Balbone. Balbone. We'll just go with Balbone. He equalises with a nice finish. Then... It was all the way, in, with three minutes to go, we uh, actually got the winner. Alan Mahood played in by Paul Sheeran. Another pile driver from the edge of the area. Fantastic. Uh, we actually then got another goal as uh, Airdrie, sorry, were about to change the, uh, were chasing the game. Nice finish there from Richard Britton, who was a loan signing from Livingston, who are in the league above us. So I used a few, I, I had quite a few loan signings, uh, as you can see here. Loan signings are in blue, so I got three there that I used throughout the season. Next game was against Queen of the South, who finished second bottom, I believe. Yep, pretty routine win. Hamida Balombe, he scored first on 49 minutes and took us until after half time to. Uh, set the tempo of the game or to start the scoring. Uh, Stephen Hislop doubled the advantage on 58 minutes and then Stephen McConnellog added a third just after the hour mark. That got us the three points there. Uh, yep, I probably won't show the goals here because there's eight of them. Actually, no, I will because Stephen Hislop got a hat trick. We lost 5 3 to Partick, but Stephen Hislop got a hat trick, so let's watch. This was actually very, very rough. They dominated us completely. Like, I was playing this guy, so basically, I had this loan keeper uh, called Alan McGregor, loaned in from Rangers, and he his loan had expired, so I had to play our regular keeper, Kevin Cuthbert. He had an absolute howler this game. He had he was on a 4 or a 3 rating at one point, but I think most of the goals were his fault. Anyway, Partick raced into a 3-0 lead. I could, yeah, well, he could have done better with the first one anyway, and maybe that one. Anyway, 3-0 up. The... Uh, are taking a free kick here. Balbone seems to rob Kerry Milne there. He dribbles round a player, passes to Hislop, who gets his first of the game. Pulls a goal back for us. However, at this point, I'm chasing the game because I need two goals to draw level. Uh, Ross Forsyth actually plays in Stephen Hislop, and I pull it back to, or we pull it back to 3 2, which is good. Just one goal in it. However, it doesn't last long. A few minutes later, Mitchell heads Partick in back into a two goal advantage they then score a penalty Fleming scores a penalty to make it 5-2 and then out of absolutely nothing 5-2 uh, becomes 5-3 as Hislop uh, manages to score a hat-trick despite being on the losing team it's not very often you can say that but 
there you go. Anyway, we lost to Partick, didn't get any points for that. They finished uh, fourth, actually. They were outside the top four for much of the season, but just climbed back into it uh, towards the end. We then managed to beat the Martin 4 0. This was in the cup. Uh, I've not said the Martin's name yet in the save because they're not in our division. They're two leagues below or the league below us. Either way, we were favourites to win and we won 4 0. Uh, Richard Britton scored in eight minutes. Stephen Hislop then got a goal. And after half time, Peter McDonald and Stephen McConnellog added to the score sheet. 4 0, pretty convincing, got us to the next round of the Scottish Cup. We then drew 0 0 with submitted, not much to be said there. And then we drew 2 2 with Clyde, pretty interesting game. Let's watch the goals. As you can see here, Alan McGregor, who I got back from the, uh, on his loan period, uh, he takes a goal kick, unfortunately, gets back into the opposition's hands, and they uh, managed to score from it. Following this, they. Uh, Make it 2-0. This is in the second half of the game. Darren Sheridan plays in John Rankin. And Mark Gulhaney scores for the home side. Making it 2-0. Uh, this is the 76th minute. 14 minutes to go. And uh, Balbone dribbles around a player to slot it to the net. And he hurries back to the halfway line because we've not got long to play. We need to get this point. Hart then plays in McDonald. Gets us a point. Seven minutes to go and we clock back from 2-0 down to 2-2 to get us the point away from home, which is uh, always a positive. So that was a, an important point there. As you can see there, we're not winning so many games. We went through a spell where we won so many. Um, we're going through a bit of a bad patch where we're not picking up maximum points from most games. Uh, we do beat Ross County, however, although they're kind of bottom of the league, so it's not really... It's to be expected, especially if one of their players does get sent off in the process. Uh, Ian Maxwell scores in three minutes, then Paul Sheeran scored in 19, and Hamid Al Balboni scores on 53 minutes to complete the scoring, get us a 3-0 victory. We then beat Ross County by the same scoreline in the Scottish Cup fourth round the week after, or, yeah, th that would have been the week after. 3-0, um, Balboni gets one and Peace McDonald gets two, uh, either side of half time to send us into the next round. Uh, following this is a league game against Wraith. I think this is the first time we beat Wraith uh, Wraith in the league. Uh, Stephen Hislop gets one, Peter McDonald gets one, and Hamid Al Balboni, who seems to be popping up with a lot of goals. Yeah, he got eight, which is pretty impressive. He's from Burkino, uh, Burkina Faso, by the way, which is in uh, Africa. As you can see, he's been capped uh, a few times for them, which is cool. But yeah, he got on the score sheet again uh, to make it 3-1. Uh, Darren Brady scored for them with eight minutes to go, but it was too little too late for Wraith as we picked up the, the uh, maximum points from that game. Then we beat Hamilton 1-0 which would be our final victory against Hamilton this season. Peter McDonald scored the only goal in 72 minutes. And then would be Airdrie 1-0. Another straightforward 1-0 win. Ian Maxwell scored, presumably from a corner. And then we played Falkirk. Might as well watch the goals to this. So I think by this point, we were actually ahead of Falkirk. We'd put together a good run of goals, a uh, run of wins, sorry. Uh, Falkirk actually, after we beat them, they, they won a few games, but then they start to lose, as you can see. Three losses in a row, albeit one of them was in the cup. They then drew more losses. Yeah, they just capitulated big time. For going from a winning streak that was like nine games long or something to just losing game after game, which wasn't good for them. But we could take advantage. And by this point, we were, I think, ahead. We were first. They were second. We watch the goal here. David Hanna... Plays in Balboni, who dribbles round Mark Campbell and slots it away. See, the reason I know all of these players' names is because I played Football Manager 2006 a lot in my youth. So, yeah, I I know the the, the, the names of a lot of the players around this league fairly well. Uh, following that, we played Hamilton uh, again. Soon after playing them in the league, we played them in the Scottish Cup quarterfinal, the last eight. It was unreal, actually, because, as you can see, the draw placed all the top division teams, that is the SPL teams, against each other. And we were the only two first-tier teams, or second-tier teams, I should say, in the quarterfinal, and we got drawn against each other. Didn't help us, though, as we ended up losing 3-1. Uh, Stephen Hislop scored early first, which was great. But then Pat Keogh, Scott Turnbridge, and Ricky Waddle scored for them to give them the 3-1 win. And they actually went on a bit of a run. Um, I'll talk more about that later. Our form went from bad to worse. We lost to Queen of the South. Not only did we lose to Queen of the South, we lost 4-1 to Queen of the South. Uh, Dean Shields, who was one of their mid-season signings, scored for them. Uh, Billy McDonald and Chris Armstrong uh, also got goals for them. Uh, Balboni, our Burkina Faso striker, or midfielder, I guess, he got one for us. But it was too little too late. 
they took all the points and they actually finished uh, second bottom. So we got beaten by the second bottom team, which was really annoying. Pulled it back together though against Partick here. Managed to beat them 2-0. Paul Sheeran and Ian Maxwell with the goals. We've not watched goals in a while. Let's, let's watch these goals, shall we? This is Paul Sheeran's goal. Pass from Peter McDonald to Hislop. Hislop then gets the ball across and Paul Sheeran with a header into the net. David Hanna with the corner. Adi and Maxwell gets our second. And that wrapped the game up for us. So that gave us maximum points from that fixture. Uh, we then beat St Mirren. Ah, oh, we'll watch this game as well. Why not? Um, St Mirren went 1-0 up in 20 minutes. Goal there. Don't know who scored that. I think it was Simon Lappin. Yeah, it was Simon Lappin. So he's a total fluke. But we all know he meant it. Uh, then we've got a throw in here. McDonald's on the ball. What's he going to do with it? He dribbles around half the team and sticks it away like a true professional. So that was on the hour mark. And following this, we then proceed to score a winner. Also through Peter McDonald, who scores from a very, very tight angle there. Nine times out of ten, that would have gone over the bar. My strikers missed a lot of chances this season, but thankfully, they uh, took them when it counted in that game. Uh, then this was just as embarrassing as Queen of the, Queen of the South lost. Do you know why? It's because County were uh, bottom of the league. So... Yeah, we lost 1-0. Stephen McGarry scored for them. Seven minutes to go. At this point, I was thinking to myself, I had three easier games and then three slightly more difficult games. And I thought, basically, if I won the three easier games, I would win the league outright and I wouldn't have to worry about the difficult games. And I thought to myself, I really need to win this game or at least draw it. And I lost with seven minutes to go, and it was I was really, really annoyed. The only good thing about losing on this particular week was Falkirk, who were still second at this point. I think they drew... And I was actually, I, I very rarely watch the other scores live while I play a game, because I just want to focus on my game, but I was so interested to see how their game was going. I was watching their scores, and they, they went ahead, and then the team they were playing pulled one back, and you're just like, please don't score again so that you don't catch me up, kind of thing. Anyway, we rectify things next week, or the week after, with a win against Wraith. Oh, this was, we need to watch this. I've never seen a goal like this, right? Watch this, so... Free kick for Wraith, we counter attack. Peter McDonald to Ross for Scythe, who puts up field. Now, this is Ian Davidson, passes it back to his keeper, and it somehow goes in the net. It's like the keeper miscontrols it or something on the line. As unreal, I've never seen that in football. Well, certainly not seen it in these early versions of Football Manager, but I mean, whatever. GG no re, I guess. Uh, we got the win as a result of that, which put us back on track for the league. And uh, then this was the game that sealed it a 5 1 victory against Clyde. Might as well watch the game. Paul Sheeran with a penalty. He missed one early in the season, but he stuck it away here when it mattered. Then we've got another goal here. Mackenzie, who's on loan at us from Rangers, passes it down to McConnellog. McConnellog with a cross to the box. And Hislop, Stephen Hislop with the header, making it 2 0. Paul Sheeran scores another penalty. We're now trouncing Clyde, racing to the title. Mark Baxter to Alan Mahood. And Richard Britton passes to McKenzie, who's actually a centre-back. Scored a really, really good finish there from the edge of the area. And then we get a corner, and it looks like that's McKenzie's second of the game. Which is unreal for centre-back, but that puts us 5 up. Then Glenn goes and score a free kick. A deflected free kick at that, but I mean, whatever. It didn't make a difference. We still got the three points, which was good. And that, in effect, won us the league. Uh, which was good, because we kind of um, didn't do that well for the last three games. We uh, well, we lost to Hamilton, who... I'll speak about them now. So, start of the season, they were top four, along with us, or along with ourselves, Wraith and Falkirk, although Falkirk were running away with it. Uh, then they must have had a bit of a bad patch and fallen out the top four. Yeah, around here. See, they lost to us, lost to Falkirk, lost to Partick. Then they just suddenly turned into the greatest team in the league and went on a winning run, or an unbeaten run at least. They lost to Partick there, but apart from that, they pretty much won every game. They lost to Livingston, but that was in the cup. Uh, they, f they managed to pull themselves into seconds of a Falkirk who we thought were going to win the league. Yeah, look at this. They were third. Okay, they, they did fall at the top four, as I thought they did. That was Wraith, but they were third, and then they just managed to catch Falkirk up as well, went at one point at did not look likely. So this is uh, this is our placement. We were fourth, and then we managed to claw our way back to first position. Hamilton, pretty much second and third the whole way. Falkirk, sadly dropped out of first, and then uh, Wraith were, uh, as you can see, they were top for one week, but they were the top four. They just gradually fell out of it. We won our second to last game against Airdrie. Simple 4-0 win. Might as well watch the goals. Why not? It's the last game with goals in it. 
I'm not very good at commentating games that have already happened, but I should see nice finish from Hislop, although the keeper should probably have done a bit better. It was kind of a weak shot. Next highlight we've got here. Nice passing, Steve McConnellog beats two defenders. There's a lot more of that I feel in this version compared to 06, is the, you know, actually visually uh, perceiving strikers to beat defenders. But there you go, that, maybe that's just me. Anyway, Paul Sheeran finds his slop, who slots in for his third. And then finally, Peter McDonald takes a shot. It's saved, but Richard Britton is there to capitalise and gets the 4 a win. So, three points. Don't really mean anything in the context of the league. Uh, but then we faced Falkirk on the final day of the season. Pretty boring no no draw. At one point during the season when we were uh, first and second it looked like this might be the title decider but you know we won the gate, uh, won the league sorry, with three games to spare and they didn't even finish second so there you go. Pretty exciting uh, game I must say. I was really happy to play through it. I was actually thinking to myself because part of the reason I was playing it was because I wanted to get my money's worth. You know I'd bought the game uh, online I just thought might as well play it, see if it's good. To speak a bit about it um, I'm not, the, the tactics I used to love these tactics, these old tactics with the arrows and everything. They're not as detailed as modern tactics, but I used to love these tactics because they were simple and I could be effective with them back in the day. But these days I just can't get to grips with them. I can't seem to set up a defence. I... The reason I used this tactic, by the way, was because I saw Falkirk using it at the start of the season. They were winning a lot, so I thought there must be some uh, method to that. Uh, so I thought I might as well try it. Also, Partick played it. Played with that formation against us and did well, so I thought, might as well give it a shot, and in the end we ended up winning the league with it. I played so many other tactics. In this version of the game, you can literally switch between tactics and it doesn't matter. These days, you have to train your squad within a particular tactic, similar to real life football. Obviously, they're not about making a... well, they want to make the game fun, but they want to make it as realistic as possible to real life management, and just switching between tactics like this isn't realistic, so... It's understandable why that's in the game, but basically, these are all the tactics that I used. Might as well show them off. I tried an asymmetrical one at the start because I was using that in another save. A 4-1-4-1 counter. My strikers weren't actually uh, scoring when there was only one up front, so I decided might as well switch to a 4-4-2 or, you know, eventually this one, which incorporated an extra striker and then an attacking midfielder eventually behind the strikers, so that provided more of an attacking threat. At least that's my thinking behind it. Counter-attacking is also really weird. Um, it's not really a game plan in this version. It's more of just an added extra that you tick, but it, it seemed to work. Anyway, that was that with the tactics. Uh, I should also add that my reserve squad, who I didn't manage, that was managed by my assistant, they won their league, Group 2, which was good beat Ross County to the title, and my under-19 squad, who again wasn't managed by myself, was uh, also, they also won their league, under-19s group two, beating Sterling and Forfer. Um, you can actually manage these teams, I believe, but I've never, yeah, so if I, if I click those boxes, control team, I will automatically, um, I'll take control of those games, the under-19s games, and the reserve squads games, as if they were first team games. But I've never done that. I'm not sure if there's anyone that actually does that. I mean, there might be, but who honestly knows? Anyway, yeah, that is the uh, save. Thank you for watching. Just a quick insight to next season. Next season, obviously, we go into the upper league, the top league. Um, I'm probably going to get relegated, honestly. Like, there's just too much quality. Cali Thistle, in real life, won the first division the season before this one. Uh, that's why they're in the top league in this game, but then look at that, they just immediately get relegated straight away, so yeah, it's probably going to be difficult. Uh, I will hopefully continue the save uh, as and when I feel like it, but uh, that is it for now. Uh, thank you everyone for watching, hope you enjoyed. I will see you when I see you.